In the next couple of slides, and this is on page six of your workbook, I'm going to do uh, a very brief and simple overview of um, cardiac anatomy. So we're on page six here, and uh, let's just go over some basic structures because, um, and, and this will be review for most people um, looking at this book, but I want to talk about uh, anatomy of the myocardium uh, and, and how we would normally perceive it and then look at it from the perspective of uh, cardiac rhythm interpretation. So uh, just to begin with, we have um, uh, the right and left atrium and um, uh, blood flows into the right and left atrium by the inferior and superior vena cava and by the uh, pulmonary veins, which we'll talk about in a minute. So there's the inferior vena cava here. And um, so uh, blood enters both atria simultaneously and the tricuspid valve on the right side and the mitral valve on the left side are open as blood enters the atria and it flows into the ventricles passively until the ventricles achieve about uh, 80 or, or rather 70 percent of their volume and at that point um, the uh, the right ventricle here on the right side and the left ventricle over here uh, contract and uh, move their content out of the uh, the myocardium and from the right side of the heart the blood travels up the the pulmonary artery and uh, travels really just a very short distance to the lungs uh, where it picks up oxygen and consequently because it's only pumping a blood a very short distance you'll notice that the right side of the myocardium is very thin walled because it doesn't have uh, nearly as much work as say the left side and this picture perhaps doesn't depict it all that well but the left side has to pump blood to the entire body to the head the trunk and so on and so forth where the right side is only pumping a short distance so it doesn't have nearly the workload after the blood uh, travels through the pulmonary circulation and picks up oxygen, it then returns to the heart via the pulmonary veins. And um, uh, uh, then from, from there, it enters the left ventricle and then is pumped out the uh, aorta uh, uh, over here. This is the aorta here, and I haven't uh, written it out, but uh, we'll just write it right now. So that's the aorta. And um, lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the epicardial surface and the endocardial surface, which is the inner part of the ventricle. So for starters, let's talk about the endocardial surface. Um, oxygenation uh, and removal of waste products does not pl take place along the endocardial surface. Um, that takes place through the coronary vessels and uh, within the myocardium itself. So the endocardium is uh, uh, fairly smooth, but it's full of nooks and crannies, and that becomes uh, significant later when we look at dysrhythmias where blood is not moving efficiently through the chambers, and when blood becomes stagnant, it, it sometimes pools in these nooks and crannies within the endocardium and uh, forms clots, and that can lead to uh, cerebral emboli and pulmonary emboli and so on, and we see that in um, atrial fibrillation uh, sometimes. The endocardial surface, what I wanted to say about the endocardial surface specifically is that the coronary vessels travel along the epicardial surface and then the vessels get smaller and smaller and smaller until they reach the endocardium. So consequently, the en epicardial surface has a bit of a richer blood supply and this is clinically significant when we look at patients in tachyarrhythmias like supraventricular tachycardia where sometimes we start to see the ST segments sag below the baseline. And when you see a normal ST segment that sags below the baseline when the heart rate is fast, that's usually a strong indication that there's subendocardial ischemia. So again, the richer blood supplies on the epicardial surface, slightly lesser supply on the endocardial surface, we start to see evidence of that in uh, a tachycardia. And lastly, I just want to mention the papillary muscles here. And uh, the papillary muscles are these string-like muscles that hold on to the um, atrial ventricular valves and keep them from everting and that keeps a seal here so the blood doesn't back up into the atria. Finally, when we look at the myocardium from an ECG perspective, the atrial ventricular valves are separated by these fibrous connected tissue rings and these effectively uh, support the AV valves but they also isolate the atria from the ventricles electrically. So the only link between the atria and the ventricles electrically is this AV node and bundle of Hiss. And so consequently, rather than looking at the heart as a two-sided pump in this direction, we look at it as a two-sided pump really in this direction. We're looking for atrial activity and we're looking for ventricle activity, ventricular activity rather, and are the two working in sync with one another?